big summer of sport we did have. We had, uh, we had the Olympics. Don't know if we enjoyed that, the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody booing the Olympics. <laughs> I fucking hated it. I hate PE. Fucking do. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Usain Bolt, that's a great name, and it? Sounds... You can make his name sound quite confrontational. Usain Bolt. <laughs> that's his middle name. I thought Usain Bolt. <laughs> the Olympics. I enjoyed the Olympics and the Paralympics. I enjoyed the whole thing. I thought it was pretty good. See, the, the prefix para. It means parallel. That's what. That's why they call it the Paralympics. Parallel. It runs parallel with the actual Olympics. See, para to me and people my age, I've always associated that with paranoia. Right? <laughs> if you describe somebody who's been a bit para, it means they've just had too many good weekends, <laughs> and their brain has just said, "Fuck this. I'm out of here. <laughs> you can do the rest yourself. I'm just going <laughs> to." You know, guys you see in house parties about eight in the morning, long after the party's finished, just sitting on the couch, wearing somebody's mum's dress. <laughs> Both their eyebrows missing. Just... <laughs> That's something you would say, he looks a bit para. So I... I laughed this year, I seen para Olympics. Well, how fucking good would that be? And I... <laughs> An athletics event for acid casualties. I'd go to that. <laughs> Just a thought I had. The Paralympics. See some guy shattering the 100 metre record because he thought the police were chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> Commentator, and what made this even more special was he completed the entire race with his head over his left shoulder. <laughs> Whilst frantically emptying his pockets onto the track. <laughs> he could have a false start at the Paralympics. The fucking voice in my head said, go. <laughs> the diving. Some guy up the top of the diving board just refusing to jump. Going there. <laughs> no chance, that's the fucking shallow end. Are you a big guy? Do you play any sports? Guy with a bicep cell? Yeah, yeah. Olympics get you inspired now? Get involved? Yeah. He plays sports. What do you play? Anything you want to play. Right, I'm not seeing if you're coming out. I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm not at your fucking door with a ball under my arm. It's not the summer holidays. We're no 10. I'm just asking, do you play? I'm kind of busy the roof for a game of Kirby. I'm just asking. <laughs> Anything you want to play, it's pushing down, we'll just play the computer. What's that in? <laughs> Do you play computer games? No, you don't play. I, I, I gave up on them. I played COD. That's what my wee cousin said. Oh, you need to get COD. Call of Duty. I'll explain that to anybody over 40. It's the biggest selling computer game of all time. It's Call of Duty. The kids call it COD. I'll just explain that in case you ever get invited over for a game of COD and you. <laughs> And you show up with the wrong fucking stuff. <laughs> Walk into your nephew's living room, start fucking slapping people. <laughs> Bet you never thought Uncle Eddie could play God Boys, eh? <laughs> I was old Western Scotland semi finalist in the 80s at God. Fucking love it. Oh, what? After I go play smoked haddock. <laughs> Same rules, different fish. <laughs> that is fucking minging Uncle Eddie. <laughs> Sorry about him, boys, he's a fucking fanny. <laughs> I was always the PlayStation generation growing up. I was always terrified. You play COD these days, it's too real. It's a, it's a war game. You control this guy in a war zone. It's high definition graphics, there's a storyline. See, I'm used to the old days. You played a computer game and your guy would die. So you would just go back to the start and then try again. And it was fun. These games, Call of Duty, your guy dies. You're fucking stunned. Like, well, I better go and buy a poppy. <laughs> <laughs> I 
start to feel guilt, I better... I better go and lay a wreath for this guy. <laughs> Picture myself standing there. People saying, oh, who did you know? Oh, I knew a guy called Player One. <laughs> the window cleaner came to my door for his money and I forgot to press pause. I was, so you don't play much sport then, big guy. What's your name? Chris. Chris. Your name's Chris. Good man, Chris. I, I was always petrified of playing sport. When I was young, I was school, so I blame the managers. That's the problem with youth development and football in this country. Go to your local playing fields on a Saturday morning and watch these guys who manage under 10s. Go if you've got a relative involved, otherwise it can look a bit dubious if you just sort of <laughs> show up every week. I watch these guys. The guys have got, they've got their initials stitched onto their tracksuit on the touchline. They've got an, an earpiece in so they can communicate to their assistant manager. He's sitting up in a fucking tree. <laughs> 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 I've got a pair of Adidas Sambas on, football socks pulled up, pair of nice tight shorts, nice 80s style. I was just screaming abuse. That's what put me out. Ter terrifying these guys. Just going, Jamie, come inside. Just screaming, demoralising abuse at nine-year-olds. Come inside, son. Jamie, Jamie, running out fancy stuff. Ah, oh, fuck you, Jamie. <laughs> That's why your mum's an alky, you wee prick. <laughs> I know, George, but it's every fucking Saturday. 